I created this smaller 12 by 12 painting as a test project for a larger painting that I'm planning on doing that would be a 36 by 36 and this was to test various techniques and color scheme as well as overall composition. I like the sky, I like the water, of course in the finished version I would be doing a lot more detail. I just did this over a couple of hours yesterday and um, the problem with it though is the ground takes up too much space. So the video that I'm doing right now is just to show you how you can save a painting if you realize there's something like this that you really don't like. Um, I didn't want to completely cover it because I really like this and I still want to work on the overall composition because I, I want to do a very large painting like this. Um, but you always have to decide what is your focal point of a painting. And um, in my cliff painting that you can see behind there, the cliffs are really actually the focal point. So I, I have just enough interest in the water by having varying colors and things that the eye goes there, but the eye keeps going back to the cliffs, the way that the edges are highlighted and the way that, the ha that I have a lot of um, texture. And there's a, just enough going on in the sky that your eye wanders up there and then it comes down around to the foreground in the front as well. But the cliffs are really the main subject. In this painting, it's a little hard to know what the main subject is because there's, there's an interesting stormy sky and then there's stuff going on here. And then there's this big chunk of land. If I had a person standing here looking out at the sea or something, maybe a woman and her child or something, that, that would be a focal point then. And then this would kind of just be in the background, your eye would keep coming back to that person. But I don't have anything like that, and I don't plan on putting anything on the ground. Another thing I could do would be to add a tree here that's very interesting, and maybe an old twisted tree. That's, but the problem here is it would be better if it was this way, if it were coming up like this, that I could have a tree that's twisting away from the water as if the wind had blown it. There's a lot of trees like that along the Oregon coast. But I really had meant for this to be kind of a stormy scene, but a certain calmness to it as well. Just sort of maybe a solemn mood. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to redraw this in much smaller, and then I'll probably have something on the shoreline here. I'm not sure. I could have an old twisted log, maybe a piece of driftwood. I could have a little boat, kind of a little beat up boat right there. I'll kind of decide that over time. But the first thing that I'll do is I'll paint in a new, a new piece of land down here. And then I will just white out all of this area here, let that dry, then I'll come over it. And for this part, I'm just using Liquitex white titanium white. I use white as the great eraser and the first thing I'll do I'll kind of just sketch in. I could have used maybe a straighter edge here to kind of get my line in. I just need to know where I'm going to run my line off of and I might, I might just bring that across like that a little bit more. That might work and I'll still have my little fence in there but I'm just going to take all of this out. I don't want any of that in there. Now you can see how that's going to really change things up. So I'll have a little bit of fence here and just enough ground to kind of add some <clears throat> interest to it. I may have a little bit of reflection out in here that kind of ties in the sky. My large painting is a square just like this one. So once I'm happy with this, my larger version will be very similar Alzir and Crimson gives a lot of pretty detail to sand. It's kind of a pretty berry color. That's what you see through here. This is Payne's Gray with some white thrown in. A little bit of Alzir and Crimson. A lot of the warm gray. And like I do with all of my paintings, I take a bit of one color, throw in a little bit of another color. Might even throw in a little bit of a third. And then I just kind of see what I'm getting from it. So this is a lot lighter than what I had, so I'll put down probably several coats. 
Get a little paint spray tossed into this. And the white is nice for blending. If I if I don't really like the way something is going down, I'll just add a little white to it. And I can darken it up later, but it I like the way that the paint moves when I do that. And don't be afraid to throw in a lot of different colors because it's amazing how it will change the flavor of a painting. If I threw in a little bit of bright gold here, that just it kind of brightens things up. Um, if I throw in actually a little bit of Payne's gray and red, I can tone that down a little bit, but it's still there. That'll tie in maybe with what's up here. So I, I just experiment as I go along. And I'm using this little scrumbler brush. I love this. And I'm putting in some of the unbleached titanium. I just dab that on there. Go ahead and dab my darker color. Now this darker color goes a long way, so I don't need much. And some of it I just kind of scrub back and forth. The main thing is all of this needs to be covered. can almost look like little grasses. Dab it in that, maybe a little bit of red. I don't want it too dark. I don't want the eye to go right to that ground either. I may not add a fence to it because that might be too much detail. So it's just kind of fuzzed out here. Just enough for the eye to know that that's ground. All along the Oregon coast you see these places where the water um, comes up to a point and then there's a nice beach to walk on and then there's a cliff or at least a higher area of ground. Some of the ground is giving away but again I don't ever take just one color because if I were to do that see I don't get anything I don't really get any definition it's it's a blob of just one color and your eye would go right there so I dab it once in that and then I dab it in a couple of other colors maybe even a little in the warm gray and then when I start doing this more than one color comes off my brush and I don't keep it in one spot either I, I move it around because if I have a color here that even if I really like it I wouldn't want all red just right there so I'll come over here and put some in this area as well so I will look at that for a while and decide what else I want to do I'll definitely add a lot more to the sand area because you can see in the painting that I'm showing um, that's the painting that I was referring to earlier that has my daughter in it and that was a painting of Indian Beach up on the Oregon coast. And in that painting, because she is the focal point really of the painting, your eye keeps coming back to her. And then it goes on out to the sea and it circles around. <clears throat> the ground could be a larger portion of the painting. With this painting, I think that I do like the idea of those fence post and I want to do something with that but I'm afraid if I run it across here and down here I'll still have a little bit too much but I need something out here so I'm thinking that I will put the fence post here coming out just partially and then I have some interesting angles I have this going across of course the horizon line of the sea is always exactly horizontal I will just put partial fence but I'll get my sand done first and I have to let this dry it's still a little bit tacky so once that dries I'll finish my sand
I like I like variation and I like some some depth and I like changes in the brightness some areas of dark and some areas of light but like I always say I don't want to go to one spot so now I'm going to try putting in a little bit of a fence and I have to decide how big of a fence I want Okay, now I have done pretty much what I want with the water. I'm going to add just a little bit more white caps. I, I brought in a bit of color up in here to kind of give the feeling of some of the waves and the changing of the depth and some activity there to the water. I will add a little bit of my usual kind of frothy stuff along the edges out here. And maybe some up in here to even that out a little bit and then I, I need to finish this I will finish my fence and I'll add my little grasses here and, and make sure that this this all flows nicely I will have some lights and darks, different colors thrown in to see kind of what I like, kind of like that. It needs to be just noticeable enough, kind of dry the eye down there a little bit, but not too much. get over to here I don't want too much attention because the eye needs to go out here if I had something like a bright flower here or something that would draw the eye that way and I really don't want to do that thank you for watching my video